Shalom, I'm Jody Hirsch, the Director of Judaic Education here at the JCC, and this is my moment of Torah. So today our Parsha is Parshat Tzav, but it's actually a special Shabbat. So why is this Shabbat called Shabbat Zachor, Shabbat Remember? It's because Purim is Saturday night, and this is the Shabbat that comes right before Purim. And so, because it's Shabbat Zachor, we're already thinking about Purim, which is tomorrow night, and we're thinking of the events of the Book of Esther. You all know the story of, of, of Purim, of course, the story of Esther, that Mordechai, a Jew in ancient Persia, refuses to bow down to the evil Haman, and Haman vows revenge, not just on Mordechai, but on all Mordechai's people, the Jews, and decides he's going to put them all to death. So Mordechai, whose niece, or is it his ward, or is it his foster daughter, um, he, ha he has a niece, Esther, who is the queen. She's married to King Ahasuerus, so he goes to her and he begs her to intercede in some way to save the Jews, which in fact she does. She, she uncovers Haman, the evildoer, um, and the king takes action against Haman and his evil plot. And so the Jews, um, the, the Jews, rejoice because they are saved from complete destruction. So why Zachor? Why Shabbat Zachor? Shabbat remember. What is there to remember? So why is it called Shabbat Zachor? It's called Shabbat Zachor because this is the paragraph that is added to the Torah reading on Shabbat Zachor. Remember what Amalek did to you by the way when you came out of Egypt, how he met you by the way and smote the hindmost of you, all that were feeble in your rear when you were faint and weary, and he feared not God. Therefore it shall be when the Lord thy God has given you rest from all your enemies about in the land which the Lord your God gives you for an inheritance to possess it, that you shall blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven, you shall not forget. So here's this paragraph that tells us about the Amalekites. The Amalekites were this tribe that attacked the Israelites while they wandered for 40 years in the desert. And they have come to symbolize the terrible enemies of Israel. So what is the connection exactly between Purim, between remembering, and between this particular paragraph about Amalekites that we read on the Shabbat before Purim? So we see here in chapter 3 of Esther, after these things, the king Ahasuerus promoted Haman, the son of Hamidata the Agagite, and advanced him and set his seat above all princes who were with him. The key, of course, is the whole idea of the Amalekites. So Agagite, what is that? Agagite comes from the name Agag. Agog was the king of the Amalekites during the time of King Saul. So Jewish tradition says that Agog and the Amalekites in general are the ancestors of all of the great enemies of Israel. So, of course, the Amalekites were the traditional enemies of the Israelites as they were wandering for 40 years in the desert. But tradition also tells us that they are the ancestors of all of the great enemies of Israel. The Romans the Cossacks, the Crusaders, Hitler, Stalin. These are all the descendants of the Amalekites. And so when we read this paragraph just, bef just before um, Purim, we learn that the memory of the Amalekites and the great enemies of Israel should be wiped out. So the key, of course, is the ending of the story. You know, it's, you know that old joke that says, you know, what is the reason for all holidays? All Jewish holidays are, they hated us, they tried to wipe us out, we survived, let's eat. So that is the story of the Jewish people. We overcome adversity, we overcome our enemies, and we rejoice. So remember, it's Purim. Rejoice, be happy. So, of course, this is one of the most famous Purim songs. I am Purim, happy and joking. Isn't it true that I only come to visit once a year? So sing along with me. 
Anipurim, Anipurim, Sameach um Vadeach, Alo Rak Pa'am Bashana, Avola Hitoreach, La La La. Chag Sameach and Shabbat Shalom.